Hi everyone and welcome to our latest cost of living Facebook live question and answer session. Here at the Mirror we have formed a team of money saving experts to help you cope with the cost of living crisis, bringing you tips, advice and answers to your questions each week. My name is Levi, I'm a money reporter here at the Mirror and this is Lynn Beatty who runs the fabulous Mrs Mummy Penny blog. Hi everybody, great to be here answering all your questions. Yes, indeed. So this week, we're going to be talking about your weekly supermarket shop and how you can cut your food bill. So let us know your thoughts. Drop us a line in the comments below and we'll try and answer as many questions as possible over the next half an hour. So, Lynn, obviously food bills are rising. Over the last week or so, we've had consultants at Kanta warding of a £180 annual increase on food bills. On top of that, we've also had the boss of Tesco saying that the worst is yet to come for struggling families. And we've mm. also this morning had Unilever, which makes lots of popular brands such as Marmite and Magnums, also warn that more price increases are on the way. I mean, this is a really kind of worrying time for families, isn't it? Yeah, no, absolutely. And and th this, this I'm, I'm surprised this hasn't happened earlier because all these big companies, they are, they're almost like suffering with the same things that we've got going on with our bills. So their energy bills are rising, their uh, fuel costs are ri arising, uh, you know, getting all the products to the shop. So they can only absorb costs for so long. And in the end, it's going to have to be passed on to um, in the products and then via our prices and what we pay. So, yeah, it's going to be um, it's going to be tough for a while to come. Absolutely. Well, thankfully, uh, that's that's why your lovely self is here. And um, yeah, we're mm. going to be talking about all the easy things that families can do today to beat the kind of rising food costs. So, um, yeah, what, what kind of what would be your kind of top tip or tips for families? All right, I suppose I'll start with I wanted to, to write about sort of supermarket spend and food um, as the first sort of article in this series of things I write for because it it feels like it is one of the costs that is most in control I certainly feel like it's the cost that I can definitely control the most um, and it's something that um, I really felt escalated in lockdown um, spend on groceries and and um, takeaways went up a lot um, and now I really feel like it's in my grasp to get it in control so I've got lots of tips that I certainly employ in the supermarket and um, that I want to share with the readers but the very first thing which is and it's something that I'm hugely guilty of and I'm really trying to stop doing it is to um, just do the one big shop in a week so go do that supermarket shop and get everything you need in that one shop. Don't do the top up shops. Cause um, like when I do the school run and I pop into like the co-op on my high street, I can easily spend like five, 10 pounds doing that. And only went in to buy I don't know, a baguette for the um, packed lunches the next day. But yeah, if you can focus on just getting all of that shopping in that one weekly shop, that's going to save you a lot of money and also a lot of time. So that's Absolutely. my big thing to start. I think as well, when you tend to pop out for these kind of, little top-up shops as well you end up going to convenience stores which obviously mm -hmm. are they tend to be more expensive than your bigger supermarkets as well yeah no absolutely i um i used to work for tesco's um so before i was mrs mummy penny i worked in um the the corporate world um in finance and actually worked for tesco's for five years and i worked for the tesco express division and absolutely <laughs> the prices are a lot higher in tesco express the convenience stores and also the like promotions and offers are different as well in those kind of stops in those kind of stores where they're very um they're very like treat um led um sort of impulse purchase led uh the the special offers you're, you're really going to get the offers on you know the essential food and the the healthy food in those smaller shops absolutely yeah no definitely pays to kind of be prepared which i think um yeah. leads on to your uh, your next tip that you have for us yeah so it's it's I know it's a bit boring and it takes a bit of preparation, but plan for your shopping trip and write a list. Um, and whilst you're what um, is, I, I always make sure I do this is once I've written my list. So I'm preparing for sort of all the breakfast, lunches, dinners and snacks that I know are going to happen that week. But also taking account of, oh, I know I'm going to be at football on Thursday night. So I need sort of pack lunch snacks for dinner um, or I'm going out for dinner on a certain night, taking all that into account, but also 
go have a look in your freezer and check what you've already got in your freezer and your grocery cupboard. And you'll, you'll be able to scrub through some of those things on your list because you've already got them um, or hidden in the back of your cupboard, you know, where you've maybe got your four tins of four tins of tomatoes already so yeah do a check of what you've already got and go to the shop with your list and stick to that list i think that's um yeah that's so crucial isn't it actually stick to it and don't be kind of led astray by impulse buys or you know anything you don't really need yeah absolutely mm. and when you um so when you go to the supermarket you've got your list what um what can you kind of do to reduce the amount that you're buying to kind yeah. of yeah so the um the very first place I go um is I know I know where it where it is in all of my um favorite supermarkets is the reduced section. So the reduced section for the bread products, the reduced section for fridge, um, and the um grocery sections. And um, they'll there may well not be stuff on your list, but there might be stuff you can substitute um on your list. So yeah, there might then maybe you've got some chicken on your list and there's some turkey in the reduced fridge section. So just get some turkey and substitute it. Um, substitutions is, is really important with the shopping list when you can find something that's like a cheaper alternative. Um, and just focus on, I think supermarkets are very clever at, at um, leading you through like the non-essential items, leading you past the end of aisles where you've got all the treat special offers the seasonal aisle um, and you know the um the uh, the power aisle in the in the, the middle of like Aldi and Lizzo with all that random stuff that you probably don't need <laughs> um, so yeah be focused with where you're going in the shop and just go and get the stuff on your list and um get in and out as quickly as you can just getting the stuff that um you really want you the the cheaper stuff that you wanted to get not not all the um, non essentials so going back to um, the reduce section, um, you almost have to be a little bit kind of tactful, uh, you know, in terms of what time you go to the supermarket to find yeah. these um, reduced items. What um, would you say there is a particular good time to find the yellow sticker deals? Yeah, it's different in every shop because I've, I mean, I've, I've got my all my local shops to, down to a T of the best time to go, and it, it seems like it's later on, um, so eight nine o'clock, which. I suppose it has a couple of advantages going shopping at that time because it's quieter and I always prefer going shopping when it's quieter, when you don't feel under pressure. There's nothing worse than, I'm sure you've experienced this, Levi, there's nothing worse than going to a like reduced area and there's like five people that have like bombed into that area that are after all the, all the food that you're after. But yes. yeah, I think later, later at night is better. Um, and also the um, price reduction is done in increments as well. I've noticed this in my local co-op. So say you go at um, five o'clock, they might have knocked like 20% off. But then if you go at seven o'clock, they've knocked 50% off. But then at like nine o'clock, I've got stuff at like 90% off before. And that's, that's amazing. And most stuff you can freeze like mi milk cheese vegetables fruit like all these kind of items you can actually freeze them so um yeah which is good for your wallet and saves from food waste as well yeah yeah no I'm a huge fan of um yeah because it's only going to get thrown into the bin isn't it but um yeah so we've um we've had a comment from a viewer called Robert who says his housemate used to keep a diary of supermarket dates so she knew when to go to the shop to get the reduced food. That's, that's, that's quite a clever uh, clever little tactic there actually. What do you think about that, Lynn? Yeah, no, I like that because because yeah, life gets in the way and um you forget when they are. But uh, I think it's. Uh, I, I, I quite like the surprise of the reduced section sometimes. So there's maybe something that wasn't on my list of that I just buy something random and then that that creates a whole different dinner plan for that week. Um, and and um, I, I always get really excited when it's more like meat and vegetable products that are in the reduced section, you know, not the ready meals and stuff. So something that you can actually turn into something substantial for dinner. Yes, indeed. Yeah. And... Um, so when you're in the supermarkets and, you know, you're trying to find your bargains, do you find whether you have a basket or whether you have a trolley, do you think that kind of has an impact on how much you spend? This is something that I um, I noticed it a few years ago because um, so I, I, I do my weekly shop at Aldi um, and the occasional top up shop at Tesco's. Um, but um, 
So I used to get like a big shopping trolley and I'd, I'd always pack it to the rafters with my weekly shop and end up spending a lot of money. Not as much probably with going to the other supermarkets because it's healthy. But um, but I changed that to one of the half trolleys instead. And um, yeah, I still would like fill it up to the top. But then the bill would come to a lot, lot less because I was being more conscious about what I was putting into the trolley because I had less room. Yes. Um, and so less of what I found was less of the impulse purchases. Um, I, I, I just completely avoided the middle aisle. Um, so because there wasn't any room in my trolley, yeah, uh, using a trolley like that, it, it it's something so simple, but it made such a difference to the eventual budget so yeah that was good makes such a huge difference doesn't it so we've had a, um, another comment from a viewer called pat here it says she only does one shop a week after thinking about what meal i'm doing each day but everything i normally buy has skyrocketed and supposed to be going up more now so again mm. it's kind of bringing it back to that concern that families are going to have to you know be cutting back and looking at deals and discounts where they can yeah. But it's interesting how, again, it kind of falls back down to that kind of preparedness and having that budget ready so you're not kind of making unnecessary spends, uh, you know, where you don't need to, as you mentioned before, Lynn. Yeah. And maybe um, for for people like Pat, then it's it's looking at the kind of products you're buying and maybe doing some brand switching. Um, and maybe she's already done it. But um, I the difference in... Um, or the difference in what you pay for branded products versus supermarket own, but also like the tiers within the supermarket own branded products, you know, um, Tesco finest all the way down to Tesco essentials or whatever. There's a huge price difference between them. So I think a lot of us are going to have to be shifting down um, from brands to non-branded alternatives. And um, a little trick with um, supermarket sort of shelvings, what they do is the products they want you to buy are the ones that are at eye line. So they're probably going to be like the Tesco finest, you know, the pricier products. But look down the bottom, like look at the products that are on the bottom shelves. There you're going to find the lower, um, the lower branded alternatives. And um, I, there, there was an interesting story about um, hula hoops a few years ago from Aldi. You, you may well know about this because it's probably in your newspaper. But um, uh, somebody had opened up a six pack of um, hula hoops and found like an Aldi packet of the... Um, Hoop, hoopla hulas or whatever the Aldi version is called. So I think they're all made in the same factory. <laughs> yes, it's surprising, isn't it? <laughs> We've um, also had another um, comment come in from a viewer called Grace, who says, for those of us with allergies and special dietary needs, there are no cheaper options. I mean, would you have any kind of tips or recommendations for um, for people such as this? Yeah, that's so... so um allergies and special dietary needs that's almost like you have to go right back to basics with your food and that's a lot of um preparation of food from basics into into meals so um what i a, a really great way of saving lots of money actually is buying frozen vegetables and fruit um which uh hopefully that helps with the special dietary requirements and and allergies but frozen frozen meat and frozen vegetables and fruit are so much cheaper and actually a little bit better for you because they're frozen like pretty much as soon as they're picked so like the nutrients are locked in as soon as um you know they've been picked um but yeah i and, and i just think it's also great for food wastage as well because you've got all that stuff just sat in your freezer you can make like a great soup or a slow cooker meal you can just pop all the frozen stuff at the beginning of the day and just let it cook all, all, all through the day um, and you haven't got it like festering in the fridge you know waiting to be used it's just sat there in the freezer i think i find especially um if you've got a small household frozen fruit and vegetables are so good because it's so hard when you buy a big pack of fresh produce yeah. and then it just doesn't last yeah like how many times oh i had a really good tip on um salad stuff actually because i something i always have is a bag of salad leaves in the fridge that ends up going out of date but um, apparently if you put a little bit of um kitchen roll into the um salad leaves it keeps it fresher for longer actually in the plastic bag oh that's a brilliant tip i didn't know that <laughs> Do you have any other kind of recommendations on how to make uh, fresh goods last longer? Oh, well, most of, even the stuff you do have in your fridge, you can actually pop that in the freezer. So I think it's it's 
and and also don't be too conscious of oh, should I say this but the dates on things I always go by the sniffing test <laughs> like if there's milk that's gone past its day I'll have a sniff of it and if it still smells okay then it's probably fine but like again milk can be frozen so yeah don't let stuff go to waste because that's just throwing money away isn't it of course I suppose another good way as well is tin food tin food is a yeah. great way as well to avoid food waste and also cut back on your spend as well lots of supermarkets yeah tin food brands on on the offer on the foods yeah absolutely and even with the tin food actually there's a huge disparity of pricing as well with like branded products versus own brand but like a tin of like chopped tomatoes um to go with like a spag bowl which is the great sort of bargain meal you can make sort of from fresh ingredients um you can you can get away with using the essential tins um bulk it out with uh maybe like a tin of lentils i love bulking food out with lentils because they're so good for you and you can almost like hide them in um, a lot of dishes that the kids don't even notice and it's very good for them good full of protein um but yeah tinned vegetables are great um tinned beans as well and yeah super super cheap so i think my, my favorite my favorite ways of saving money in the supermarket is tinned goods and um frozen goods fabulous and i know you mentioned earlier about swapping out the more kind of expensive brands for the cheaper products and i think that's known as the downshift challenge and it can mm. save you as much as 30 percent on your shop which is a huge huge saving especially in the kind of cost of living crisis so what um what kind of tips would you have for someone who is looking to kind of downshift would you say kind of try it for like say a month and then if you like what you have stick to it yeah, I think just be open to it and um, just giving things a try. And I think you'd be surprised as to what, like something that, because um, I, I, talk, I talk to people about this kind of thing. So um, washing powder is something that, you, washing powder is something people have used the same brand for like 20 years. It's like, <laughs> but but like I, I use the, the Aldi own version of washing powder and it's great. Oh, we've got Grace saying Morrison's baked beans are hands down better. Um, the um, the Aldi chocolate spread, it tastes exactly the same as, um, you know, the, um, the, the big brand that's really expensive. And it's like a third of the price. Uh, the cereals are really good as well. So, um, yeah, I just think try it out and, yeah, give it give it a few weeks to try it. And um eventually particularly if you're trying to convince children as well because chocolate spread on my children was one that I needed to convince them on just keep doing it for a bit longer and in the end they'll just give up and they'll go with the cheaper version <laughs> and when it comes to um sort of trying to convince um the children to swap to that cheaper brand do you do you often like tell them we're trying out absolutely yeah, I'm really open and honest with the children about how much things cost and, um, yeah, the reason why we're doing things, but particularly with food, because I think uh, they need to have an appreciation that, like, a big tub of um, expensive branded chocolate spread is, like, four quid when the Aldi one is is a pound, so um, I'm, I'm making up prices there, that might not be actually right, but, um, yeah, they, I, they they have a really good appreciation for how much things are cost. Are costing and and also that things are going up a lot at the moment I, I do want my children to be very aware that it's a challenging time that we're living in at the moment so um they, they love to go out and find deals on things like when they if they need like a new pair of trainers I've got three boys by the way um if they need a new pair of trainers um they'll like find a deal online and they'll send me like the sale deal that they found I love, I love that getting them into the money, money, savvy. money savvy children <laughs> I love that that's so cute yeah but don't take your children shopping with you if you can avoid it <laughs> I know that's um, difficult for a lot of a lot of um, people out there but um yeah they <laughs> my my children particularly when they were smaller they'll just grab things off the shelf and just put them into the trolley without you even noticing so um yeah so if you can do it solo because I hear the same thing with partners as well you know you go out with your partner and they go oh let's let's have this for this evening and you're going no that you know deviates away from the list yeah yeah just yeah just go by yourself go when it's quiet go when you can like pay a bit of attention to um if there are offers on things that are on your list um you can pay attention to you know like you have the um 
the price and the product information on the shelf edge labels, which are like the price per item or the price per hundred grams. I think that's always worth looking at. And it's something I've looked at for years and years because it doesn't necessarily work that um, let's use let's, some cat food is something that I buy a lot of. Um, the price per pouch isn't necessarily lower when you buy like a bigger box of something. So, and sometimes I'll compare brands and I'll compare special offers to actually work out what the best price per item is. Perfect. We've got um, another viewer here, Leanne, is saying, it's all right saying Tim food, but not all kids will eat it. It has to be kid friendly. What will kind of be your recommendations if um, you've got a child who is perhaps reluctant to uh, to make a switch or to, to eat tinned food? I think it's like it, it's trying them on lots of different things and finding it's almost like finding that thing that they there'll be something that they like like my my children will eat tin sweet corn I know they will because I've tried it on them another great way of getting them to eat it actually was um so we've done um rather than ordering takeaway pizzas we've like made pizzas at home where we've made actually made the dough from scratch and then um you've got all sort of different um tin vegetables that you can add on and a bit of cheese and a bit of like ham that that made it a lot more exciting for the children it's just get it's making it a bit more fun to introduce them to healthier food but also like the cheaper versions of the food as well I think again it's so important to kind of bring that awareness as well of how much things are you know are costing and to explain to them the reason why actually it could be cheaper to make it ourselves yeah completely yeah and it's fun as well like what could be more fun like making a load of pizza dough and um it tastes just as good as those um takeaway ones it's <laughs> often even better to be fair when you made it yourself yeah and the satisfaction of making it yourself like we we love doing that here no absolutely i'm just going to move on to another point that um you've mentioned previously about um what sections in the supermarket should you avoid? So I know you mentioned Audi, mm. for example, super cheap. But if you get sucked into the middle aisle, it can be easy to kind of get um, to kind of deviate and to get distracted. So what other yeah. kind of areas in the supermarket would you avoid? Yeah. So I think the um, so the end of aisles is always a dangerous area because so that's where promotions generally are. So a lot of the in a lot of the um, Sainsbury's promotions or the Morrison's promotions will be on the end of aisles. Now, promotions tend to be around sort of impulse treat purchases, so biscuits, chocolates, crisps, um, booze, uh, which probably aren't on your list or, or they won't make up much of your list. So uh, they are just there to make you buy them and to also make you buy like in volume as well. Um, so just be really careful of them. Um, the seasonal areas of the, um, which is normally like the very first part you um, walk past when you walk into a supermarket. Again, um, I always think, um, so So there's Easter eggs everywhere at the moment in store, isn't there? Which is like, oh my gosh, how can that be so <laughs> near? But um, and it's, it's like encouraging us to buy early, um, which is great as long as you can buy early and like but in I know what I've done in the past like I've bought easter eggs and I, I've had a bit of a chocolate craving and I've just gone and like got them out of the covers and I've eaten them I've been, so, all um, been guilty. <laughs> all guilty yeah <laughs> it's like be careful about um be careful about what you buy too early or, or hide it somewhere that no, that maybe you'll forget about or that no no child will ever discover um or or package partner or you but um, yeah, there's, there's quite a lot of, and, and I also think um, the like non-food areas, if you are specifically going in for that weekly shop, then yeah, just, just don't go near like the candles or the, or the cushions um, or the magazines, those kind of areas, because yeah, it's just, it's just extra stuff that you, you don't need to spend money on. Just going back to um, what you were saying about seasonal products, it's always really interesting once the season is over how you suddenly find all them products like really, really reduced, like Christmas is finished. You'll see lots of kind of Christmas decorations, even in supermarkets, supermarkets will yeah. stop lots of Christmas stock now. So it can be worthwhile if you can afford it. And, you know, you've got the space to store products away and they keep and they last. You know, that's yeah. another kind of I, interesting thing. 
I had um, I had a person um, message me in my Facebook group telling me that they buy all of their Christmas presents in January. <laughs> I was yeah. like so organized and so prepared, but literally she'd got everything. She just puts it away into the loft or whatever into a box, and uh, yeah, she's she's sorted for the next Christmas. Like I think that's amazing preparation. I'm not sure you can do that with that many, with that much food product. But certainly with cards and um, if if you send cards. I have to say, though, I'm not a person that sends Christmas cards. I'm a big money saver there. I don't send cards. I save on the postage. But. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I've got yeah. another interesting comment here from Jan saying, I swapped tomato ketchup years ago, yeah. put the cheap one into a Heinz bottle, and he never noticed the that. difference. Now, that's interesting because Heinz ketchup is the only one, really, that I can't get my children to move away from. Oh. Like, I, I, for, for about a year, I'd, I'd, I'd got the um, Aldi, um, Tesco, uh, the Aldi sort of tomato ketchup, but they're, um, I'm divorced from their dad and their dad was still buying Heinz ketchup. So they came back to me, like, oh, mommy, can, can you just get Heinz ketchup? We really don't like the ketchup you buy. So I had to give in on that one. Oh, you can't can't win them all. <laughs> no, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> nice um comment here from Luke saying most supermarket offers are not even big on saving customers money, e.g. encouraging us yeah. to spend more on such buy free for the price of two, which is yes, yeah, such an important um such an important thing to flag because yeah, deals are not always as they seem, are they, Lynn? Yeah, it's not like it's a lot of the deals, they're not like it's it's 50% off something. It's you have to buy in bulk, in volume to actually make the savings. And when when you're shopping for that weekly shop, you just need the things for that week. I just the, the buying in bulk, it can get it can get out of control and you end up, you know, with 24 toilet rolls and you didn't need that many. And um, yeah, it, it just means that we want to sort of stabilize how much we're spending on a weekly basis so buying all those special offers in bulk isn't going to help that what are your thoughts on the kind of big kind of warehouse stores like costco i mean are they kind of any good for saving people money mm, i've had so many discussions with people about costco and everybody says to me that they they might go in there to buy their bulk purchase of toilet roll but they end up buying because they see so many things that are like amazing deals they end up spending a lot of money um really good for petrol is what i have been um what's been shared with me as well it is a bit cheaper for fuel but um yeah generally people say to me that they end up spending a lot more money in those sort of places because it is it's really big things you're buying in bulk isn't it so it may well be like 50 toilet rolls but that's going to cost you i don't know 10 quid for 50 toilet rolls that's actually quite a lot of money out of a weekly budget on some toilet roll it is especially if you don't like you say if you don't need all that all the all of what you're buying yeah completely mm, yeah so i yeah. think that is probably just about all the time we have for this week um the fabulous lynn has posted an article on the mirror with her top 10 tips to save money in the supermarket so be sure to give that a read you can see it on the screen now and uh, we'll be back next week at 1 p.m. on Thursday for another Cost of Living Facebook Live session. So see you next week, everyone. And thank you so much for joining us, Lynn. Thank you for having me.